Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Z defocus node. This node, right? It's a node that you use to apply camera blur to simulate depth of field. For those who don't know yet, you're going to hear about bokeh. Bokeh is the pattern of the blur. It's basically what a single point of light would look like if it was out of focus. So if you had like a really small light you look at through a camera, then that's what the bokeh would look like. And the shape of that bokeh is basically depending on the lens or the aperture. So I can show you a few uh, bokeh. These are some that I actually shot. That's one, for example. So that I shot by turning on an LED in totally dark room with the camera just make the light becomes out of focus and that's what you get. And all these things is because the lens were kind of an old lens so it has imperfections. Um, you can also make your own which I've done here so you can see a bunch of different ones. Right so that kind of stuff or this some details on the edges or these are created for just for me to have basically. Okay, so in order to use the defocus, you're gonna need to know what a Z-depth pass is. Z-depth is a channel that has the color information from black to white with often values beyond one and it usually carries depth information and usually comes from a 3D program like a V-Ray or Redshift or it can also come from Nuke directly from the scanline render in Nuke. Of course, you can create your own. You can make fake Z-depth. It's basically a black and white image and you can use it as a Z-depth by shuffling it into the, the depth channel, right? Because here you have a depth channel. You can, if you shuffle something in there, then you can use it later as the depth channel. Also in the defocus node, you can choose which channel you use. So it doesn't have to be depth. You can use anything that you have. So let's start by creating a checkerboard just to try to make a fake Z. So here I have a checkerboard. I'm gonna deform it just to give it a fake perspective look. And then I'm gonna create a fake uh, Z depth. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a ramp, simple ramp. And the reason why I'm not using an image yet, an, an actual uh, uh, 3D image, is that I want you guys to be able to redo it at home even if you don't have access to 3D renders. So if you have just a ramp, just nuke, then you can still do it, right? So now I'm gonna shuffle this ramp here. So in this case, black is four and then close part is one. So it's a very narrow uh, depth. So I'm gonna shuffle the Z in that channel. Here I'm taking RGB, right? Which is this thing here and I'm shuffling it into the Z. There you go. So this one into the Z, of course. All right, so now if I look at the depth here, I can see that the Z depth, which is red, is going from black to white. All right, so now let's plug this into our uh, Z defocus node and let's look at what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna just reformat here quickly just to keep the B box around this. Okay, so you can see it's defocusing the image and you can see here when I uh, use the defocus node, I have this focal point here. And basically this is a like a helper to point where I want the focus to be. So let's say I want the focus to be here. And you can see now it's in focus. I'm gonna crank it up and I'll explain what these are for. But at least right now you get an idea. So see, that's our defocus. So that's what the node is doing. So let's go through the parameters now. The first one here is the channel you choose to be your Z depth channel. So in this case, since we shuffle the, the, this one, the ramp into the Z, as you can see here into the depth, then here I can use Z depth, right? That's what I'm doing now. So the second thing here is the math. So you can get a different kinds of Z depth pass from different render engines. So here is basically described which kind of Z depth you're using. The one I'm using right now, Far is zero, right? And uh, Z is one over distance. So basically, far is zero. So you see, it would be black over there. And then if the distance is uh, closer to zero, you have a higher value. If the distance is very high, then you have a lower value. So to talk about the other parameters, I have a little image here uh, to explain how this works. This is a camera right here. And this is the focal point, the one that we set, we set earlier, uh, the, the point of focus basically, where everything is sharp in the image. 
and this is your depth, right? For our, in our case, it goes from one to zero, but it could be anything, right? It could go from uh, zero to a thousand. Again, it could be whatever. So now let's go back to the parameters and, and look at exactly uh, what they mean. So the focal plane, we've seen that, is where the focal point is here. It's basically what plane, what area is in focus. So that's the distance here, that's the distance you choose to, to be that. So in, in our case here, we decided that this position here is the, the focal plane. The depth of field uh, here is an area that you want to keep in focus. So in real world cameras, there's no depth of field. There's no, this area here doesn't exist really. It's usually slowly becoming out of focus and so slowly that you think that there is a bigger area that is in focus. In reality, there's only one physical point that is in focus. So this is to kind of cheat. If you make it bigger here, you will see that you'll have this area. And the color I'm picking here are relevant because I'll show you how this works. So if we go back to our uh, Z defocus, here we can pick which output we have. So here is the result. We're looking at the results of the defocus. Uh, but you can also pick the focal plane setup. Here you can see your image. You can show it or not. And you can see color that are going over. So basically it's telling you that the blue is what beyond the focal point and then the red is what's in front of it. And if you raise the depth of field, it will create a green area, which is the area that will be totally in focus, right? 100% in focus. If you go back to result, you can see now we have a bigger area that is in focus compared to zero. It's gonna narrow down. And if I put 0 0.3, you can have a bigger area in focus. So that's what the depth of field is for. It's the focus area, right? So here is the value of blur. So zero being here, and that's where the depth of field is, it's zero, and it goes up to the maximum. And the maximum, we're gonna look at that right now. So the size of the blur is basically deciding how much you are blurring the image. And in the distance here, you can see the Z is gonna, the, the goes away from the focal point, both in the front and in the back of the focal point. So from here, it's zero, right here it's zero, and then it rise, up to the maximum. So here you decide how much it rise. So basically, if you have a small number here, it's going to be almost flat. And if you have a really high number, it's going to be very steep and it's going to become blurry very, very quickly. And the maximum is how much is your biggest blur, right? It's kind of a limitation that also exists in the real world where the bokeh, so the amount of blur, will never reach past a certain level. So going back to this, if I put the minimum to a 30, let's say, and then I push that a lot, you're going to start to see that it's becoming very, very out of focus because I'm raising that. So my line here is getting very steep, right? But I reach the maximum quicker too, you know? And you can see that here in this area where this is the depth of field area, the sharp area. And then this is our line that goes up. And then it reached the maximum, now it's 30 for the rest of the field. So that's basically how it works. So this is what they are used for. So I'm going to go back to something a little more normal. Uh, also, this parameter here is ultimately the one that will make it very long to render or not. The higher the filter is, the higher the size is, the longer it's going to be to render. I mean, it's kind of a combination between the two, right? This is how much blur you want to have, and then what is the clamp, what is the maximum. So now to the next parameters, automatic layer spacing. So in order to create a blur that looks like it's slowly going from a small blur to a bigger blur, in order to create that, what Nuke is actually doing is doing steps of blur. So it's like, here's a blur zero, one pixel, two, three, four, and then up to 30 in this case. So the number of layers that you have is basically how many times you cut this. So I can show you another image that explains that too this one so like we said here this is how much blur is applied to the image but in reality in nuke that's how it's done right this this stairs here that we have so in this case we have four uh, layers one layer two layer three layer four layer and that's how nuke is actually doing it but when you put it automatic usually what happens is like it does it enough so you don't really see uh, what's going on if you want to optimize in certain case, you can actually take over this and then put very small amount of uh, layer spacing. And here you can see what it does, right? It goes from zero to 30, but it only one step. And then you can increase that and you can start to see 
what it actually does. And then if you go back to automatic, it's going to do all this. So that's one way you could optimize yourself if you wanted to, but I usually uh, keep it on so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, the next thing is uh, what is the filter type? So that comes back to the bokeh that we uh, were talking about earlier. The filter type is what are you blurring it with? And in order to show you exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to create a small point, really, really small point. Let's take that over there in the distance. So here, a small point here. And I'm going to make it very bright, like over one, you know, like 10. A very bright spot right there so what's going to happen is when i'm going to defocus it oh actually i should be even brighter than this so let's make it 100 there you go there you go so now you can see the blur is applied overall on the image but we have a super bright dot you can see exactly how it's blurring everything right so everything is blurred with the same circle same disk but here it's so bright that this circle pops that's the type of filter I'm using here, right? I'm using a circle. You can use bladed, which would mean that everything would change where you have blades. And here comes different parameters. I let you play with it. The only weird one, I have to say, is the uh, catadioptric one. Some lenses, they have a black piece that creates like a black spot in the middle. So if you activate it, what will happen is like, see, it creates like a dot because on the physical camera lens, there is a black dot in the middle. Uh, you can look at it on Wikipedia. It's, I'm sure it's explained <laughs> much better than me. But that's the two first things, right? Either a disc or bladed. And then you can change the number of blades to you know, whatever you want. And the, the next one, uh, I'll come back to it. And the last thing is, uh, the last couple things are uh, gamma correction. So what it does is that instead of just applying the defocus right away, it does a 2.2 gamma correction on top and then does the depth of field and then do the invert gamma correction after. You, you see more in the brighter areas, right, by doing that. And the blue one is actually if you want to have certain areas be very, very bright. So you can see when I'm doing it, this dot here, which is very bright, is blooming, right? It's within the threshold. It's way beyond the threshold. So I see much brighter. So what it means is that everything that is above 0 0.8 is being multiplied by 5. So uh, let's go back to the filter and try with a different bokeh. So like I said, I have different bokehs here. So let's go in there. This one. So that's the book I'm going to use. Plug it into the filter because it's giving me an error because this image doesn't have an alpha and by default it's using the alpha. So I can ask it to use the red channel instead. There you go. And you can see that now this circle we have here is actually using our bokeh that we uh, created. So I would advise that you use your own bokeh that you can make or you can grab online. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But then, you know, with that in mind, you can make the whole thing a little more uh, realistic. So you can create depth of field that looks a little more like a camera because in a camera, it would look a little bit like that. Another thing we can try is to use a, an image that comes from a renderer. Uh, this is something that my friend Benoit rendered for a project we had a couple of years ago. As you can see, it's like a step on the moon and it does have Z-depth here. The reason why I want to show you that is that it's going to appear all red and some people get confused by that sometimes. But when you look at your values here, you can see that actually it's going from 24 up to 45. And you kind of don't see it, right? Because it's all a beyond one you don't need to see it in order to use a depth of field for it but if you want to see it you can either play with this here and with this you will see it appear you know you can start to play with that and see that's a quick way to do it if you really want to see it well what you can do is like you can use a grade node and then on the black point you can put your lower value which is here around 20 let's say so 20 and then on the top here it's a 45 let's say so in the white point you can put 45 and if you do that and you grade the z you can actually see it now and you can move the values a little bit around to really get to see what it looks like it's not absolutely necessary but it's always good to check when you get something from 3d because sometimes some objects are uh, invisible in the color channels but then they appear in the z or so let's replace our checker here with our image now. 
Now it's all out of focus, of course, because the value we have for the focus plane is still taking the one that was uh, 0, uh, 44. But now we know our depth is going from uh, 20 to 50, basically. So here you can put something like 30. And it's kind of like around here. If you don't want to type a value, you can still use that and pick exactly where on the image you want to you want to see your focal point. You want to be in focus. And I try usually to put the depth of field to zero because it's a more realistic thing, but it's actually good to have a little bit because in real world, it's never really 100% focus and you always have like a range that is in focus. So you can move that around and then you can pick how much blur you want. So here you can see I'm pushing it a little bit. So in the distance and here in foreground, it's really uh, high. And you can do this. You can see that here, so I'm going to try to push it a little more just to show you. You can see that we're using this one. I'm going to switch back to the other one. OK, it's really extreme now. And you can see, we can look how we see the details in the, in the depth of field. So if you go around and look at real photographs, you can see what kind of bokeh you have out there. And then you can try to match them. Uh, I tend to use something a little more gritty all the time. So you get a little bit more of a nice look like this. I hope you guys uh, liked the video. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. I will do my best to answer it. And I'll see you next time.